I think that if you're a short-term macro trader, like you're thinking in terms of hours or days or even weeks, you're really concerned about that question. But I think that if you have a time frame of four to 10 years, I think there's a different question, which is why are the interest rates going up? And, uh, and what is the macroeconomic environment? And I would, say, I would say you probably shouldn't even buy Bitcoin if, you're, uh, if your time horizon is less than four years because you're a trader. And if you're a trader, you're probably not gonna care about anything that I have to say. You're just looking at, at, at whether it's correlated or uncorrelated and, and throwing lots of money around without thinking about it. As Bitcoin is teetering on the precipice of an abyss, according to some crypto market analysts, it's price hitting its lowest level since July 2021. The cryptocurrency has lost more than 50% of its value over the last six months amid a market-wide downturn that has wiped more than $1.5 trillion from the overall crypto market. Hello and welcome to Webster Finance. In today's video, Michael Saylor, the CEO of business analytics software firm MicroStrategy discusses how Bitcoin will recover from the ongoing crash. The billionaire who discloses he bought 17,732 Bitcoins for $175 million in October 2020 gives his thought on inflation and the interest rates and how they can affect Bitcoin and other issues. So, without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. I think if you're really a deep thinker or a macroeconomic investor, the bigger issue is we have monetary inflation. The, the money supply or the currency supply is expanding. I think the news today in Turkey was 70% inflation in Turkish lira. We probably got something in the range of 15 to 20% currency inflation in the US dollar and the euro. We've got 40% inflation in like an Argentine peso or more. So what you have is an inflationary environment. We know the CPI, which is, which is, a, which is a, uh, a manipulated measure of inflation. It's actually the lowest inflation that one could reasonably measure, I think. Uh, it's like 7.5%, 65 7 8% in the US and Europe. And these are 40-year highs. So the CPI is 8%, but the, but the actual asset inflation rate is double to triple that. So the reason that interest rates are going up is because there's pressure on the central banks to get inflation under control. And, and their one tool to do it is raise interest rates. But they're not going to stop the inflation because the inflation is caused by excessive money printing, budget deficits, and the wars and political policies, domestic and foreign policies, and these policies continue. So given the fact that we have uh, an expansive currency environment, and what you can see is the price of, of food and energy and scarce resources keeps going up, the question really is, if I have some money, what should I invest in? And the answer is you don't want to hold currency because the currency is collapsing in value. You know, the, the US dollars lost 99.7% of its value over 90 years. I mean, and that's the winner. The losers are, are losing 99.9% .9 of their value over 100 years. So the currencies are all collapsing. So I, I don't want to hold the currency. I don't want to hold bonds because bonds are currency derivatives. You know, you know I'm going to basically, you're going to give me a million dollars and I'm going to give you interest on the million dollars at 3% for 30 years. And I'll give you the million dollars back. And in 30 years, the dollars will buy 10% of what they buy right now. So that's even worse. You don't want to hold a value stock that generates, it's valued on cash flows because if a stock is valued on cash flows without growth, it looks just like a bond, right? It might be slightly better than a bond. But if, you, if the currency is losing 10% of its value a year and you can't raise your cash flows or raise your prices, you, you have to increase your cash flows 10% a year to offset a 10% currency collapse, right? So when the currency is collapsing at 70% a year, like Turkey, the company you own has to raise its prices in Turkish lira 70% or sorry, you have to, you have to raise your, your prices by an amount such that your cash flows would increase by 70% so that you hold parity in value. So equities are currency derivatives, partial currency derivatives. Bonds are almost complete currency derivatives. Commercial real estate is a partial currency derivative. The currency is currency derivative, right? It's a full currency derivative. So what do I own? And the answer is I wanna own scarce property. 
scarce desirable property. What is it that you own that an affluent, intelligent person will want to buy from you in a decade? That's the question you have to ask yourself. So if you're owning things that will last a decade, right? I mean, if, if you buy a car that's not going to last a decade, it's not really an asset, it's depreciating. But maybe you own a sports team or a Picasso painting. I don't know. Well, will people want to buy gold from you in a decade? Will they want to own, own uh, the building that you own in a decade, right? Uh, will they want to own the intellectual property rights? Well, it, it all depends. Uh, Bitcoin is scarce desirable asset because it represents digital property. If I own a million dollars worth of buildings in Moscow in a decade, who's going to want to buy them from me? Presumably affluent, intelligent Russians, but will an affluent, intelligent uh, British person or Chinese business person or American want to own that asset? The same is true. Uh, you own a million dollars worth of buildings in Nigeria. Who's going to want to buy them in 10 years? Who's going, to, who's going to want to buy what you own? If you own a million dollars worth of Argentine pesos for the next 10 years, they're going to be worth $10,000, right? So you're not going to want to own that, but owning a million dollars worth of buildings in Buenos Aires is only going to appeal to someone that wants to live and work or use that real estate in Buenos Aires, and you're going to pay the tax and the maintenance cost in between now and then. So interest rates are going up because there's macroeconomic headwinds blowing. The real problem is inflation. If inflation's running 20% and the interest rates uh, go to 2%, they're not going to stop the problem of currency collapse. They're just going to create a, a near-term turbulence. And if you're a trader, you may get caught in that turbulence. But ultimately, um, if you're an investor and you're concerned about preserving your wealth to give to your children or your grandchildren, then uh, whenever you're in an inflationary environment, your, your strategy is simple. I have to convert my weak currency into a strong currency, ideally convert my weak property into strong property. And that strong property, I want to move out of the country. I want to move it out of the jurisdiction of a politician that may confiscate it or tax it away. Right. And that, that's why, you know, converting a million pesos, a million dollars of pesos into a million dollars of dollars in bonus errors won't help you because eventually the politicians will freeze your bank accounts, convert it back into pesos and devalue it 20 to one. That won't help. Right. Converting a million dollars of pesos into a million dollars of dollars and then uh, buying a million dollars worth of big tech stocks in the U.S. may be a better idea. If the big tech stocks are monopolies, they'll be able to raise their prices, hold their cash flows and hold value. Monopolies will be fine. Right. What is a monopoly? It's scarce, desirable property. If I offered you a monopoly with unfettered ability to change the price of something that like oxygen, sell oxygen in New York City, you know, you're probably going to do okay, right? The problem with, with even monopolies, though, is over time, monopolies get regulated, right? Like, like in theory, the richest person ought to be the person that sells water in New York City, but they're not the richest person because the New Yorkers get together and they decide that they don't want the water company to raise the price of water to $100 a gallon, even though you'd pay it if you were thirsty. So what, what can I buy that's going to hold its value over time that represents scarce, desirable property? Not just scarce, because there's a lot of things that are scarce that aren't desirable, right? Scarce, desirable property. And uh, <clears throat> I think one of the obvious things is digital property, right? If I created a city in cyberspace with 21 million blocks and nobody could make any more and it was going to last for a thousand years and it was the dominant city and everyone wanted to live there, would you want to own one of those blocks? And I think the answer is yeah. And that city is called Bitcoin.